Hello and welcome to Mr Ridley's GCSE Engineering and this is Engineering Revision Clip number 5 and this is on Metal Processes and Finishes. So the first thing we're going to look at is sand casting. A sand casting is produced by forming a mould with the help of a model or pattern, uh, often made of wood. Uh, this is pressed into a sand mixture and it's remo removed leaving a cav cavity. The molten liquid metal, in this case aluminium, is poured into the mould and when the mould is then cooled, the metal is solidified, the, the casting is separated from the mould. So if we have a look here, and um, we can see here the aluminium being poured in, we can see a mould here, often a core is used for a hollow, um, a hollow casting, and here is the sand. And this produces, um, so the steps are place a pattern in the sand to create a mould, uh, incorporate pattern in the sand and a gating system so that lets the air out and the, the metal in, um, remove the pattern, fill the mould cavity with molten metal, and allow the metal to cool, break sand away and remove the casting. Um, the castings are generally quite low grade in their finish and often require further machining. So that is sand casting. Hot forging. Iron and steel can be shaped by heating the metal to a hot high temperatures and then hammering into shape. This can be done by hand, um, here there's someone hammering some hot metal, or it can be done with a, a machine. Here a ring is being forged using a um, large press, so that is hot forging. Uh, drop forging is done by placing very hot steel between two moulds or dies. The top is hammered down until a shape is formed. By forging steel we create a grain structure which creates a much stronger product than casting or machining. So you can see here a grain structure because the metal is actually shaped by hammering into a shape. Heat treating metals. Steels can be heat treated to increase their hardness and strength. Steel tools such as knives, dies and cutting and forming tools need a hardened structure to resist wear. So these are heat treated they can be hardened. Steel is hardened by heating it to a high temperature and then quenched by placing it in a, the hot metal into a bath of water. This rapid cooling changes, changes the structure of the steel, hardening it, but it also makes it brittle. Tempering steel. Once steel has been quenched hardened, it is very brittle and small impacts hitting it may cause fractures. Tempering is a heat treatment that reduces the brittleness of the steel without significantly lowering its hardness and strength. All hardened steels must be tempered before use. So here we can see tempered knife blades. Annealing is carried out on metals before working them to soften them, the metal and to make the metal malleable and easy to work. Annealing softens the metal, which can be cut and shaped more easily. Mild steel is heated to a red heat and allowed to cool slowly. Copper is annealed in a different way. So annealing is heating, allowing to cool slowly on steel, and that softens it, allowing it to be worked more easily. Milling. Milling shapes um, by holding the metal in a vise or clamp, and the cutting tools rotate across the work, removing metal. Um, conventional milling generally produces just flat surfaces. You can see these tools, the, the, the metal is fed here, the tool rotates, and actually just takes material off, usually in a flat plane. And here's a milling machine here. CNC milling, or computer controlled, numerically controlled uh, milling, is done by milling machines controlled by computers. These machines can produce complex shapes in metals very accurately, usually straight from CAD drawings. So here's some CNC milling. The metal lathe. Metal lathes like this can be used to shape metals in a process called turning. There's some parts here which you should be familiar with, the parts of the metal lathe, the chuck, the headstock, the tool post. Lathe processes. So the two um, most common lathe processes are parallel turning here, where the tool moves along parallel to the rotating work to remove material, and facing off. Facing off is where the tool moves across the face of the material to put, make a smooth surface at 90 degrees to the workpiece. Center drilling. This process uses a stationary drill, so the drill stays stationary as you can see here, and the work is rotated. And this means the holes are all exactly in, always exactly in the center of the work. 
Um, another lathe process is knurling. This process gives this grid pattern on the, the um, workpiece. You can see the knurling tool here. The work, work is turned in the truck chuck using a knurling tool and it's used on things like these BMX foot pegs have knurled finish. Parting off. This process is used for removing material or cutting off from a completed work, work piece. So generally a narrow tool goes in and once it gets to the center it will remove this disc so this disc can be removed. This is bored prior to being removed then you'll end up with a, a component like that. So this is parting off. Cold pressed steel. Thinner sheet steel can be press formed using dies and formers into complex sh shapes like this car side panel. So we can see here that there is a, a, a soft part or a mould and it's pushed in and that deforms the steel. On this it would be more complex moulds to shape the steel. Extrusion. Extrusion is a process to create objects of fixed cross-sectional profile. So you've got an item like this and the material is pushed or drawn uh, through a die of, a decide, uh, uh, of the desired cross-section. So you can have very complex cross-sections like this and you get a very good surface finish. So you've got um, a material like here, can be metal, and a huge force is applied on here and that pushes it through die. Uh, through the die. The die is a, a piece of hardened steel with a hole in it and that pushes it through and forms the extruded shape. So as well as polymers and um, ceramics, food stuff, that's how spaghetti is made. Extrusion. Painting metals. Painting can protect ferrous metals like steel and it just relies really on creating a water and air proof barrier to protect it from rusting. Oxidization, like rust here, needs water and it needs air. So if you put a coat of metal paint on it, that will protect it. Um, as long as the surface of steel is protected, the metal will not rust. Metal can, um, paint often consists of a primer, so you've got a red primer here and a top coat, and can be applied by brush or spray painting. And we can see here, just keeping the water and humidity out. Plastic dip coating. This is like painting, but it's a thicker, more durable um, process. Plastic dip coating is where the metal is dipped into the, uh, a piece of metal is dipped into a plastic coating and gives a plastic uh, a protective coating on the finished product. It increases the useful life of the product um, and it can be used for decorative purposes or it can give on a tool like this where it might have a sharp edge here, it can give a, a, a better grip to make the tool more ergonomic. So if we look at um, these stages here. Here's some tools that have been dip coated. The handles have been dip, dip coated and here's a pair of pliers. So the first stage is the metal item is heated in the oven. The hot metal is then lowered into a fluidized powder. So air is blown through the bottom of this um, plastic powder, in this case red. The powder sticks to the metal and fuses together. The tool is withdrawn from the fluidized bath. The plastic cools leaving a smooth durable coating. So that is plastic dip coating. Electroplating. This is a shiny protective layer that can be given cheaply to metal and it works to add a protective layer that will stop the metal from rusting or corroding. So we've got chromium plated brass taps here. It gives a hard shiny surface finish that is more attractive which looks better and will increase sales of the product. The quality of the uh, finish gives a quality look to the finished piece and it costs less than using maybe stainless steel. So these um, taps here, this sink tap here, are made from brass, polished, chrome plating goes on and it gives them a high quality finish that is um, easy to clean. That's electro plating. Hot dip galvanizing. In this process the steel objects, we've got some railings here and they are part, uh, dipped into a bath of molten zinc and this protects the steel with a thin coating of zinc. Galvanizing is more durable than paint because it is also protected by an electrolytic action. So it is very, very durable. So it's used on items like railings and that to give a very durable rust proof finish. Now it's time for questions. Name three finishes which can be applied to protect mild steel.
three finishes to protect my old steel. Painting. Plastic dip coating and galvanizing. Which process can produce very complex shapes from metals straight from CAD drawings? The process is CNC milling, computer numerically controlled milling. Metal processes. This process is hardening. This process changes the structure of the steel, hardening and strengthen it. It's used on things like drill bits. Hardening. This process is forging. This process shapes and strengthens steel. So this is forging. Which metal process can be used to make metal sections and also spaghetti? This process is extrusion where the, the metal is forced by a huge force through a die. That is extrusion. Which metal process was used to make these aluminium products? Which metal process? It was sand casting. Can you remember these process names? These are turning or lathe processes. They are knurling. This one is facing off, drilling, parallel turning, and parting off. These are the lathe processes. Thank you for watching Mr. Ridley's GCSE Engineering, and good luck in your exam.